Welcome to this um, webinar about edge routing. Um, my name is Benjamin Niedermann. Um, I'm a software developer at Viveworks and a member of the layout algorithms team. So this basically means that I daily work on um, layout algorithms. I improve them. I also develop new features and uh, new visualization techniques that you can use to visualize your connected data. Um, besides that, I also give this uh, series of webinars um, that are about layout algorithms that are offered by the Wi-Files library, so the main product of Wi-Works. And the idea is that I introduce you to the different layouts, um, answering questions like how to use them, when to use them, and also giving um, concrete coding examples, um, showing how you can use them in your in implementations. Um, today it's a very special webinar because it's not about only one particular layout but about edge routing which is part of all of these um, layouts that I already have presented. And um, today I would like to talk about edge routing, so the idea how to connect the nodes with edges and reroute the edges, for example, so in order to maybe reduce the visual clutter or to express certain information. And this is what the webinar will be about. Um, so the main goal of edge routing is to find geometric paths for edges and, in, for example, to improve the legibility. On the left hand side you can see an example um, where you can uh, where you see that the um, nodes are connected only by straight line edges so this is basically the simplest way how you can do this and if the nodes are already placed and you just connect them by um, straight line edges then typically what happens is that um, edges overlap other nodes or they start also to cross each other and um, of course uh, this is not what you want to do um, you would like to um, have nodes that are not um, cluttered with the edges. So one very simple solution, so a very simple visual solution is to reroute the edges to find geometric paths for these edges um, such that um, uh, they go around these nodes um, forming for example orthogonal paths. Uh, another idea is to use organic edge routing uh, where the um, edges or the paths of the edges have more an organic style. Um, and this is what I want to present you today in this webinar, how you can do this uh, for your graph layouts, for your connected data, um, obtaining um, yeah, layouts that are not cluttered with these uh, edges crossing, for example, nodes. Um, this webinar will be structured as follows. Um, it will consist of four parts, namely the first part there I will give you a very uh, broad overview on edge routing and principles and how you can uh, apply edge routing in general. Then um, I will present you in the second part um, how you can do this in practice, showing the possibilities of Wi-Fi uh, wi files, so the um, SDK that you can use to visualize your graph data. And in the third part, which will be very short, um, this will be about a demo where I use this edge routing, showing you that you can also use this for an interactive scenario. And then in the last part, I will give you a coding example and concrete example in Wi-Files HTML, showing you how to configure um, edge routing algorithms in Wi-Files. And yeah, if you have some questions, I will wrap up this webinar at the end um, with some Q&A session. And here the idea is that um, if you have questions during the webinar, you can use the chat um, function of Zoom and uh, write the questions into the chat and I will try to answer these questions afterwards. In case that you watch this video um, on, um, afterwards on YouTube, uh, then you can just place your questions below the YouTube video in the comment section and we will try to answer your questions as soon as possible. And with this, I would like to start the main part of this webinar. Um, so with the first part, namely the overview on edge routing. Um, for this overview, I will do this in two parts, namely uh, one part about the routing styles and then the second part will be about how to aggregate edges um, in order to further reduce um, the visual complexity of the routing. So let's start with the routing styles. Um, and 
here I would like to start with a uh, way to um, draw the edges without routing, so the simplest way, namely straight lines edges. So here the idea is really that we only connect the centers of the nodes using a straight line um, segment. On the left hand side here you can see uh, an example that has been layouted using the organic layout of Y files for fraud detection and on the right hand side uh, this is an example for network monitoring um, also using organic layout. Other examples come from social networks and they are typically also use, uh, layouted using the organic layout and this is not uh, by accident but by purpose. Often uh, if you want to use straight line um, segments then it pays off to use the organic layout because here the assumption, the main assumption is that the nodes can be moved freely and this um, can be used by the layout algorithms to place the nodes such that the edges do not cross each other if it uh, is possible or it's uh, basically reduce the number of crossings or um, it also tries to reduce um, the length of the edges and also overlaps with nodes. Um, but for that uh, the organic layout really needs to uh, freely place the nodes uh, and for straight line edges um, this is also only possible if you can place your nodes freely. Uh, sometimes you have would like to impose constraints on um, on your nodes. So for example, if you have a hierarchic structure, um, then you would like to um, place the nodes, for example, in layers. And then um, straight line edges won't work very well. Um, and then you need to reroute your edges. And this brings me to the routing style of orthogonal edges. This is a very classical style um, in which um, yeah, in which uh, the segments or the edges consist only of horizontal and vertical segments. Um, and it's typically used in technical drawings like uh, the decision diagram or glass diagram um, in UML. Um, here on the left hand side you can see a decision diagram that has been layouted with the hierarchic layout of Y files and on the right hand side you can see a layout that has been layouted with the orthogonal layout. And Typically these nodes have some layer constraints here in this decision diagram and now if you imagine to use just straight line edges um, you can imagine that this won't look very nice and especially it will look cluttered so you need to use some edge routing and orthogonal edge uh, routing uh, really plans in with this um, idea of having nodes um, on layers um, because this already gives you some kind of orthogonal grid structure and um, these bands, um, these edges um, emphasize this uh, grid structure as well. Um, the same applies also for class diagrams so especially in technical drawings you often find orthogonal edges. Uh, generalization um, of this um, are octilinear edges. So here the idea is that you are not uh, that you not only use um, two directions for your edges, horizontal and vertical, but you also allow diagonal directions, so multiples of 45 degree slopes. Um, and this style is typically used um, in metro maps. So if you would like to visualize a transportation network and you would like to only to show a very rough schematization of this transportation network, then often octilinear edges are used. Uh, this is because they are a bit more flexible than orthogonal edges and you can also um, show diagonal uh, paths um, in the schematization which also makes it more flexible for the entire diagram. Um, these ideas of, of schematization is also found in other diagrams, so for example also in UML diagrams where you can use octilinear edges um, and again here you gain some flexibility uh, compared to the orthogonal edges. Then in uh, another routing style that I would like to present are curved edges. Here the idea is um, that um, you not describe the edges by single segments or by a single or by a polyline but by a curve so for example described by a Bessier curve. Um, and this gives you um, the possibility to describe a smooth edge that is 
maybe similar to a straight line edge, but you can uh, circumvent uh, nodes. So if you look at this um, geographic map here, where we have placed the airports um, at certain locations and connected them uh, using some edges, what we now can do is uh, by um, bending this um, the straight line edge, for example, for between these two airports uh, like this, then we can gain some space and gain some distance to other airports. So this gives us again some flexibility. Um, so also in this case where we not allowed to uh, move any of these nodes. Um, further, um, these curved um, edges are often used in aesthetically um, uh, strong um, diagrams and here I would like to introduce you to one uh, diagram uh, that you can also find on our home um, on, on our web page um, and this diagram will show the Marvel Universe so as this figure is really small at this uh, point I would like to switch to the web browser and as I said you can also do this on on your computer um, and explore the Marvel Universe um, one moment um, and here it is. Um, and here what you can see is um, a timeline. So uh, it starts in 1940 and ends uh, in the future. Uh, and what you can see on the timelines are single movies. So each of these nodes here uh, represents a movie uh, of the Marvel Universe. And these edges here, so for example the red edge um, represents a character of, um, of the Marvel Universe, so for example Iron Man. Uh, so, and what you can see is if an edge crosses um, here some of these nodes, this means um, that uh, the character uh, was part of this movie. Um, and here for this um, layout what we did is we used a hierarchic layout uh, that was oriented from left to right. And in order to make everything a bit more smooth we used curved edges. Um, further what we also did is we used the thickness of the edges to express further information. And this is um, the thickness of the edges represents the relative screen time of the characters in the movies. So here for example the um, edge of the Iron Man is really thick so this means that the relative screen time was high and then uh, for example for this movie uh, the screen time was uh, basically only very low uh, and then for the others in, it increased again. And uh, this gives you a very nice way to explore this graph and to see uh, how certain characters have evolved in the uh, Marvel Universe um, through the movies and how, how they were um, part um, of these movies. So let's go back uh, to the presentation. Um, and this brings me um, to the routing styles um, or the, the summary of the routing styles. So what you've seen is that there are three main routing styles. Um, you can further um, generalize this octilinear routing style to polyline routing styles where, where you have more um, directions. Um, and all of these layout style or routing styles have have some advantages and disadvantages. Or, uh, and uh, the question is, of course, when to use them. Um, so for straight line um, routing, um, here it's uh, important to say that it has a low visual complexity. Um, if you can move the nodes freely and um, the, the graph has uh, a certain structure that allows you uh, to, for, for example, to reduce the number of crossings. So it's uh, mostly suitable for sparse graphs, but if you have a look at um, hairball graphs where, where you have a lot of edges, uh, then typically you won't uh, see anything in, in these graph layouts because there are just too many um, edges crossing each other. Um, so for the orthogonal and octilinear layout, they are typically very, or they very well suit um, grid-like graph drawings uh, because they also have a grid-like structure and um, you can also use them for um, showing dense graphs because now you have the possibility to circumvent um, nodes and um, to use other uh, routes um, to, to express these edge paths. 
And then the curves, um, finally, uh, they are really nice to reduce visual clutter in the sense that uh, you don't introduce bends. So typically these bends here, um, these sharp bends are perceived uh, often as some, some kind of visual clutter if you have some layout. And um, these curves uh, will reduce this uh, clutter because now they, they become smooth. So one very simple way to achieve this is to compute um, an octilinear layout and then to round off these uh, corners using curves. Um, and uh, yeah, here below in this line you can see typical layouts that you can use or that are used with these routing styles but typically these uh, layout algorithms also support other routing styles and this depends very much on, on your application uh, what you want to use. So this brings me to the next part um, of this overview namely um, the aggregation of edges. Um, which gives you a further possibility to reduce uh, the visual complexity of your drawing by just summarizing edges. So for example in this drawing uh, there are multiple edges connecting these nodes but the idea is that we draw the edges on top of each other so that they um, show a common um, structure on um, uh, yeah, a common structure that um, are uh, that they have in, in common. Um, the same applies here for example or in this example and these I would like to explain more in detail now. So the first example that you've seen is bus routing. Um, here the idea is that we summarize edges that um, basically represent many-to-many -many, um, connections. So for example these working stations uh, are all connected with this um, uh, with this router and also can communicate with each other. So the idea is in to introduce some bus um, which is, has also a uh, technical correspondence in, in computer networks so we really want to uh, visualize only one um, edge uh, here for example this horizontal edge summarizing all these connections that are possible to this router um, for example. Um, here in this example we have used a tree layout. Um, another way of edge or of edge aggregation is edge grouping. Here the idea is very similar to bus routing, but for bus routing we typically summarize the intermediate part of the edges. And here at uh, in edge routing uh, in edge grouping we would like to summarize um, the prefix or suffix of the edges. So in this case, um, if you have a look at this small graph here, what we've done is we summarize the beginning of the edges and then at some point they split um, um, and become um, individual edges. Uh, this is typically also used in class diagrams for um, expressing inheritance. Uh, here, for example, um, these classes um, are derived from this class and instead of drawing each edge separately um, we draw them or the common part uh, as one edge and then at some point they split. Um, Here is another um, example using the hierarchic layout showing the structure of Y files. Again um, the first part of the edges are summarized to one edge and then uh, at some point they split um, getting individual edges. And the finally, uh, the last technique for this edge aggregation is edge bundling. It's a bit different to edge grouping and edge, um, uh, edge buses. So edge grouping and edge buses, um, if you use them correctly, you don't lose any information. Um, and uh, this basically means that um, you can still uh, see this or you can interpret them that you still can see the single edges and know which node is connected with the, uh, which other node. So for edge bundling the idea is that you heuristically summarize the edges in order to reduce the visual clutter. So if you have a look at this social network here on the left hand side which has been layouted using the circular layout, then in this um, focus region here in the um, interior um, we have a lot of edges that has been bundled. And so if you imagine now that we just use straight lines then there would be uh, a lot of um, of, of there would be many edges that that cross each other. 
Um, and this edge bundling reduces this visual clutter of crossings um, and we still can see main, main structures in this graph. So there are many connections between these nodes and there are many connections between these nodes here, but we cannot recognize uh, single connections anymore. So if you want to give an main or an high level overview on the, of a graph, then edge bundling is often nice uh, to use. Another example that I've already shown in the Cactus webinar is um, shown here. Um, here what we've done is we bundled uh, the edges by categ uh, categories. So for example the blue edges are bundled or the red edges are bundled or the orange edges are bundled. Uh, and what they give you is some information about the flow. So you cannot recognize the single edges anymore but you can recognize the flow so that uh, for example this node um, has a large flow to these nodes but uh, only a small flow uh, to these nodes here. So uh, this edge bundling gives you the possibility to get a high level overview. So summarizing the aggregation techniques, um, you've learned that there's bus routing, edge grouping and edge bundling. Uh, bus routing is typically used for many-to-many relationships that you would like to present. So in this example, I want uh, I directly now that this node is uh, connected to all the other nodes here um, via this uh, large bus here. Um, edge grouping is often used for uh, one-to-many um, relations. So in this case, you know, okay, this node is connected to these nodes here uh, and also to these nodes. Sometimes you can also um, express um, M to N uh, relations. So what you of course can do is to summarize um, these connections further and um, then you get um, uh, a more, yeah, uh, also an M to N relationship uh, expression. And then the edge bundling, uh, here the idea was to heuristically um, reduce the clutter by just, um, uh, by just summarizing and aggregating uh, edges that have similar um, roads uh, and this gives you a high level overview of your graph. And typical um, routing styles that you can use is for bus routing and edge grouping is orthogonal because you need to somehow um, aggregate them geometrically and this uh, basically uh, works for, for orthogonal edges. And then uh, for the edge bundling here it's typically used, uh, here typically curved edges are used uh, because um, here you really can uh, bundle them like the, the metaphor of, of uh, bundles. Um, uh, are used. Um, okay, this about the aggregation and uh, this already finishes uh, the first part of the webinar and I would like to go to the second part. So here you um, again see the, the two parts uh, that I've uh, talked about and let's go to the second part. Um, so the second part will be about edge routing in practice and what I mean with this I would like to uh, present you the possibilities that are offered by Y files um, and how you can uh, use them. So edge routing is a really broad topic also in Y files and there are many possibilities and I would like to give you a high level overview on this. Um, there are basically two approaches that you can take. Uh, the first approach is that you use the edge routing integrated in layouts. So in the last webinar, so for example the circular layout, the orthogonal layout, hierarchic layout or cactus layout, uh, in all these um, webinars I also already presented you how you can do edge routing uh, directly based on the layout. So they typically allow you to do some, um, some customized edge routing and they are uh, optimized for certain routing techniques. Um, but sometimes, um, so for example, if you already have a layout of a graph and you don't want to change the node positions, um, you don't want to rerun the entire layout, but you only want to rerun uh, the routing. And here um, you can use standalone edge routings. Um, so for example, um, here we are given a layout that has been layouted by the organic layout. And now I would like to um, yeah, to reroute the edges using the orthogonal routing style such that um, 
the nodes are not moved. And for this, I can use edge routers. Uh, this is a typical use case also in interactive scenarios uh, where you maybe move one node so the news user is allowed to use the, uh, to move the nodes and the user moves one node and then you would like to reroute the edges without changing the entire layout and then you can use for example these standalone edge routers. Um, another use case for these standalone edge routers um, is that um, these uh, edge routings for um, for these um, graph layouts are really optimized but sometimes they have not uh, the, the feature you're looking for but maybe the more general edge router has this feature then you can also uh, use this edge router instead. So there is not only one edge router in NY files but there are many different edge routers that you can actually use and there these six is only um, a very small collection of, of these um, uh, edge routers, uh, but there are also other uh, edge routers. But today I would like to focus on these and also for these I will only give a very small overview on their possibilities. And uh, this will be um, the, the reminder of the second part of the webinar that I will uh, talk and discuss, um, that I will talk about these um, edge routers here. Um, so I would like to start with the most important um, edge router in Y files, namely, uh, and the most powerful edge router, namely uh, the edge router uh, that is um, optimized for polylines. And in Y files, if you look at the classes, you will find this uh, edge router um, with the um, with the name edge. Um, or this edge router has the name edge router because it's really uh, the, the central um, edge router of, of, um, that you can use. Um, so it also supports um, routing styles like um, the orthogonal polyline and curved routing style, uh, but it also supports ed uh, edge aggregation and port candidates and constraints. Um, so here you can see three examples using different um, routing styles, which you already know from the first part um, of, of the webinar. Um, and now I would like to um, explain what are port candidates and constraints. Uh, ah, maybe one thing that I should mention before about the edge aggregation. Um, here what is supported is um, bus routing and edge grouping, but not edge bundling. Um, and then apart from that also port candidates and constraints are supported. So what do I mean with port candidates and uh, constraints? So the idea is that um, if you connect an edge to a node, uh, this uh, happens at a certain uh, point. And this point is called a port. Uh, and so it's the connection point between the edge and the node. And port candidates and constraints allow you to specify where an edge should end. And you can do this on different levels. So what you could do is you could say, um, for this node, I would like to have three ports on, on the southern side and several ports on, on the other sides. And you can specify the numbers of ports that you have on the single sides. And then the edge router will try to um, comply with these uh, sets of candidates. Another thing that you can do is that you can say, okay, I have a particular edge in my hand. So for example, this orange edge, and I would like to let it end on the southern side of the node. Then I can also specify this for this particular edge um, that it should end there. And uh, the edge router supports this. If you would like to know how to do this more in a practical sense, so on, on the coding side, I recommend you to uh, watch the uh, webinar on hierarchic layouts. There I show how, how to do this for the hierarchic layout. But if you know how to do this for the hierarchic layout, you also know how to do this for the edge router because it's the very same um, way uh, to define them. Um, the next edge router that I would like to present shortly is uh, the bus router. Um, as I already said, this polyline router already um, supports um, bus routing, but there's also a specialized bus router that has some further features um, and that you can use. Uh, but actually what we uh, do is that we um, 
try to uh, move the functionality to the edge router and typically the um, easiest way to get bus routing is to use the edge router instead and uh, then you can also use the other features of the edge router. Um, so you will find two classes for example in Wi files uh, which is, are called bus route and the edge router that I have presented before. Um, maybe one comment about, about bus routing, it's not only for, for this class here, but it's a um, uh, recommendation um, for, for all bus routing you do, is that it mostly works for, for undirected graphs. So if you have directed graphs, um, then you get sometimes the problems that these directions do not comply with the buses. Um, uh, so just, just visually, they, it's not a technical problem, but it's just a visual problem. Um, and um, for that, um, it's often recommended uh, to use them on undirected graphs. Um, yeah, so this was about the bus router. Now I would like to go to the organic layout, which is also a very interesting edge routing um, technique. Um, here the idea is to use a force directed approach or force based approach. So if you would like to know more how these force based approaches work, um, there's a webinar on the organic layout where I basically describe how um, organic approaches work. Uh, but here the idea is that, so summarizing very shortly, is that we uh, try to find routes for these edges using forces. Uh, and the nodes um, are, will be um, repulsive forces. So maybe we start with a straight line drawing, so all edges are straight lines and what we do is we introduce bands and um, on these bands uh, we apply forces and what you get is a physical model that um, then um, yeah, that then leads to an, a drawing in which you get an organic uh, path style for these edges. Uh, so especially uh, if you have a more organic layout, you can also try to use the organic edge router for some of the cases. Then um, another routing example or an edge router is um, the curved um, routing stage. And uh, this uh, term of stage already gives you an indication that this is basically basically an algorithm that you, you should apply on existing layouts. And the idea is that you are given an orthogonal layout and you convert this orthogonal layout or this orthogonal routing into a curved one. And it's done very easily by just rounding off the um, sharp bends using um, curves. But sometimes this is really nice to get a more smooth um, drawing for, for your graph. And uh, here we use uh, cubic Bezier uh, splines, for example. Um, here again is an uh, edge router, it's called parallel edge router, which is often used as a post-processing step um, after applying other routers. Um, so sometimes you have um, nodes that are connected by multiple edges with each other. Uh, so like these two nodes, they have multiple edges uh, and the other uh, routers do not support this case. Uh, but what you can do is you can um, uh, use this or web your other router using the parallel edge router. What this then does is that it hides uh, the parallel or the multiple edges and only one remains, the other router then will create a path for this um, single edge and then the parallel edge router will uh, introduce uh, parallel edges to this path um, such that they run in parallel. And there are different um, customizations that you can do. Uh, so for example here if you only have few edges you can just say okay they should run in parallel, but sometimes you have many of these edges and then it's better to let them end, for example, in one point or start them in one point. And of course you can um, also restrict them to subsets of edges. And finally, there is also the edge bundling stage. So edge bundling, some of the layout algorithms support them um, 
by by themselves. So, for example, the circular layout that I pre presented in the last webinar, uh, there you can just use edge bundling. But sometimes you have a layout and you would like to apply um, edge bundling afterwards, and then for this you can use the edge bundling stage. And what it will try is, or what it does is that it um, aggregates the edges using a force-based uh, method. So the idea is that. Um, the edges get some attractive forces and they um, aggregate using this and what you also can do is you can um, customize the strengths. So you can decide to have a weak bundling uh, like this or a strong bundling like this. Uh, and there's basically a an, an parameter that you can change um, to, to adjust the bundling strengths. And of course you can also um, uh, um, customize the set of bundled edges so that you can say okay I would like to bundle only a category of edges um, or different edge categories should be bundled differently. Um, for this you can also use the edge bundling stage. And with this um, I already come to the next part uh, so now you've learned um, about how or what possibilities you have in, in Y files to use edge routing and now I would like to show you a short demo on this. Um, and this demo you can also find on our web page um, and uh, now I will just open it one moment. Uh, and this is here this demo and what I would like to show you is that you can create interactive visualizations with this edge routing. So a typical use case is that um, you have a diagram and the um, a user can change the diagram interactively and what I would like to do is to only change the edge routing and only partly change the edge routing. So for example if I close this um, group what happens is that uh, this edge is adapted and also the other edges but only if it's necessary and now I can play around with this a bit and what you can see that um, the edge routing is um, applied correspondingly. Uh, and let's see what happens. Um, yeah, here I can resize the node. Um, okay, I should do some. Ah, yeah, now, uh, now there is a change. So the idea is, of course, that I uh, should also overlap with these edges. Otherwise, there is no reason for the edge router to change things. But for example, if I take this node and I overlap this with this band, then uh, the edge router recognizes, okay, I should do something at this point, and then uh, it locally changes the edge routing. Uh, and this can uh, basically. Um, achieved very easily so um, you need to just to configure your edge router what um, uh, with the typical um, properties that you would like to set and then you only need to say okay and just apply this um, on on edges that need to be rerouted and then the edge router will recognize on its own which of these edges need to be rerouted uh, and this gives you then the possibility uh, to also incorporate interactive um, applications. So, so much about um, the demo and the next part will then be about um, uh, the coding example. Um, here the idea is that I give you a very short example using Wi-Files HTML. If you come from another platform, so for example from .NET or Java, um, then it's, uh, it's not difficult to see how to do this also in Java or .NET because the API is the very same and um, it's only some syntactical things that are a bit different. And in this, um, in this um, coding example, I would like to introduce you to the idea um, or yeah, I would like to present um, a layout that is based on the hierarchic layout and then in the first step I will show you how to uh, use the integrated um, edge routing layout um, to configure this uh, further. So there the idea is that I uh, want to visualize these edges as curved edges and these edges here as um, octilinear edges. And then in the second step I then show how to use a standalone router um, 
uh, showing how to configure it that it can be used to create buses between uh, these nodes here and uh, edge groups between the other nodes. So maybe I also should sa say something uh, about the example. It's a very simple example on a, of a computer network. You have some servers and these servers um, are placed here in, in the middle and then we have some computers and these computers also belong to units. So we have a tech unit uh, and these computers are placed then in their corresponding units. Uh, and for example, for this edge grouping idea, I only want to group edges that uh, belong to computers that uh, belong to the same unit. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, uh, the idea is also, of course, to only to visualize the edges between the servers as a backbone. And now I would like to jump to the um, source code and show you um, how to do this um, in, in Wi Files HTML. Yep. I'm sorry. Uh, so, moment. so this is um, the input. So I've applied already an hierarchic layout. Um, I've done this here in this method. So you only need to focus on this method here. Um, what I've done is I've created an hierarchic layout and also an, an object for hierarchic layout data, which helps me to configure this hierarchic layout. And then I do this configuring uh, and I use this just as a black box. So uh, this is not interesting uh, at this moment uh, for this webinar. And um, then the result, when I uh, run this layout, I will get uh, this result here. And I can run this layout by calling apply layout and it, it expects layout and the layout data. And the first thing that I would like to show uh, you is how to change um, the um, edge routing style of these um, edges and for all edges first. And to that end, what we do is that we create a curved routing style. So I would like to have curved routes, uh, routing paths. Uh, to that end, I um, create an object curved routing style. And this is um, of type um, hierarchic layout routing style. And this we can configure furthermore. Um, so, and this expects an, uh, a style that we actually want to use. So, in our case, uh, the curved style. And for this, we have here this um, enumeration um, of type curved and uh, we set this and then we get um, a simple object about this um, and this object we register at the layout. And to that end, we use this global edge layout descriptor and this edge layout descriptor is meant for every edge of, of the graph. And uh, this edge layout descriptor has this property routing style. And uh, here we set just curved routing style. And um, of course, I could have done this also um, inline, but I want to use this curved routing style object later on. Uh, so I've created an extra variable for this. Uh, so if I run this now, um, I get a new layout where all edges are just curved edges. So now I would like to show, so this is, this is really great if you have one routing style for your entire graph, but sometimes you would like to have a routing style for certain edges uh, that are different than other edges. So in our case, we have edges that connect the servers with each other, and we have edges that connect servers with computers. Um, and I only want to have curved edges, for example, for servers. And for the others, I would like to have, um, let's say, octilinear edges. Um, in order to distinguish between these server edges and these um, edges between uh, servers and computers, I have this method is backbone edge. And basically what this does, it checks whether the uh, starting node and the end node of both uh, of the edge are both servers. And if this is the case, then it's a backbone edge. So it's one of these edges here in, in the um, middle of this drawing. So what I can do is, is I can define a further routing style and I just call it, let's say, default routing style. 
and I would like to have it oct uh, as an octilinear routing style. Uh, and now I would like to tell the layout algorithms which to use for which edges. To that end, I can use the idea of the layout data, which allows you to define um, edge layout descriptors for each edge. So what you see here is that you can get here in mapping, and this mapping maps each edge on a layout descriptor. So what I also need to do first is to create a layout descriptor for uh, the backbone, but also for the default edges. So I have here a backbone um, uh, edge des descriptor, and um, this is of type hierarchic layout edge layout descriptor. And um, here this expects a routing style, and this routing style is then, for example, the um, curved routing style. And the very same we can do for the um, default. Um, uh, default style. Um, here we call it a default edge descriptor. And uh, here we set this to the um, default routing style. So now we need to tell the layout uh, which edge descriptor should be used for which edge. And to that end we use the layout data and then the layout descriptors. And here we can use a delegate. And uh, this delegate is basically a lambda function uh, for which we can say, okay, it, it expects an edge and this edge uh, and this lambda function should return one of the both of the layout descriptors. Um, and what we can do is, oh, okay, I can write this a bit short, more shortly. Um, I can check whether um, the edge is a backbone edge. And if this is the case, then I return um, the backbone edge descriptor. And otherwise, I return um, the default um, edge descriptor. So I reformat this so that you can read this a uh, bit better. Uh, and now we get uh, this um, setting here. I also need to uh, delete this line um, because now we are, I, I should delete this because now we have defined for every edge a um, descriptor and these descriptors will override the default setting that we have set here at this point. So I can delete this. Um, so we run this. Uh, what we now get is that the backbone edges are curved edges and all other edges are octilinear edges. Um, so this is um, uh, the, the first um, thing that, uh, or the first part um, of the coding example. So as I already said, sometimes um, you also would like to um, use other routing styles or other routing techniques like bus routing. And here the hierarchic layout does not support bus routing. It, um, uh, so what we can do is we can first run the hierarchic layout and then we can apply the bus routing um, uh, for these edges. Uh, and also can configure the edge router for these edging, edges using edge groups. Um, so what I will do is I will basically delete this code here again. Um, we don't need this anymore. This was uh, to show you how to configure the hierarchic layout as an example for the also for the other layouts, um, defining some some edge routing techniques. So I delete this, and uh, instead what I do is that I create an edge router. And this edge router gets also the hierarchic layout. So the idea is that the edge router now, um, when it is executed, it first executes the layout. So first the, the hierarchic layout is uh, created like this here. But then the edge router discards um, the routes produced by the hierarchic layout, but reroutes um, them um, uh, with respect to our customizations. And we also need some um, edge router data. Um, and now we need to change this apply layout a bit. So we want to apply the edge router and the edge router is responsible for applying the hierarchic layout. And we can combine both data sets with each other using combine with. 
So if I rerun this, I will get a very similar result as before. Um, it's also an orthogonal layout, but as you can see, some of the edges are routed a bit differently. Uh, this is also especially because uh, the hierarchic layout can also um, optimize this a bit better because it can also uh, take um, some decisions into account that the edge router does not know anymore. Um, so let's start with the bus routing. So now I would like to say that every edge of the or every backbone edge should belong to a bus. And to that end, we can have a look at the edge router data. And here you find the property buses. And this property expects an uh, item collection mapping from I edge to edge router bus descriptor. So what we need to do is we n first need to dis um, create a bus descriptor. Uh, I call it backbone uh, bus descriptor. And um, this is of type edge router bus descriptor. And um, now what this does is that we could configure it a bit more. So for example, you could uh, define some minimum lengths on this and uh, also about uh, some, some other um, things like the bus points that you can uh, define or the automatic edge grouping. But uh, I just want to use the default values for this. And now what I can do is um, I can add this to the buses um, like this. And now we also need to tell the um, edge router which of the edges should be used. And to that end, we can use the object that is returned. And what is returned is an item collection. Um, and this item collection, uh, we, we can or we can tell this item collection which edges belong to it. Uh, and we again use just a delegate and we can use this shorthand uh, where we just write or where we just de um, define uh, the lambda function expected here or the function that is expected as a delegate uh, using this is backbone edge. So now what happens is that uh, the edge router will uh, go through this item collection and checks for each edge of the graph whether it belongs to this collection uh, or not. And it belongs to this collection if it is a backbone edge. And then uh, it will route these edges as one single bus. Up. Sometimes I need to do this twice. Uh, yeah, now uh, it is refreshed and um, now what you can see is that all the edges belong to one bus and we have reduced um, the visual clutter um, substantially. Now in the final step of this coding example, I also would like to group these edges. So as you can see, there are many edges going outwards, but um, actually it does not pay off to have these many edges at this point, but we can also group them and I would like to do this. And uh, what you need to know is that the edges are directed from the servers to the uh, computer units. So what we need to do is we need to do an um, edge grouping at the sources of the edges. And I only want to group edges that belong to the uh, same unit or that go to the same unit. So what I can do is here, Um, that I define the group IDs. So I need to define for these uh, three edges the same ID and then the edge router knows, okay, these edges should be grouped together. And uh, this is quite simple. Um, we just um, define again um, a delegate uh, for this. So here we get an edge and we need to return some ID, so an arbitrary object, and this object should be the same for all units, uh, for the edges of the same unit. And um, what I do is I check whether this edge is a backbone edge. And if this is the case, uh, then I just return null because all other edges, sh uh, so the backbone edges should not be grouped. Um, this I can express with null. Um, and for the other edges, I just return um, the tag of the unit. So if you recall this in our data, each node had a unit it belongs to, uh, and this we return as an ID.
Oh, I need to reload this again. And now the edges are grouped together. So they are drawn on top of each other and at some point uh, they split and again we have reduced the visual clutter but we haven't lost any information in this diagram uh, but we can gain the very same as before. Yeah, and with this I would like to um, end um, this coding example and I would like to go to the conclusion. So in this webinar you have learned that edge routing is manifold. So there are many different layout styles and I uh, have shown you um, three of them. And of course there are also the straight lines. And then you can also use edge aggregation to further um, tweak your, your edge routings. Um, so for example there is bundling but also um, edge grouping or edge buses. And then what you've also learned um, that there is um, some kind of integrated edge routing for the layout so often and this is typically the first way that you should go is to see whether your layout that you want to apply on your graph also supports the edge routing that you would like to have. So this is typically opti or these edge routings are typically optimized for these layouts and they are also highly customizable um, so often it's a it's, uh, way to go. Um, but sometimes, especially in the case that you don't want to move the nodes, uh, then you can also use standalone routers like uh, the very general edge router, but there are many other routers like the organic router that you can apply on this. And this uh, should give you a broad overview on the possibilities in edge routing. Of course, there are also other things beyond edge routing. Um, so for example, um, you can um, um, you can um, play with the thickness of the edges in order to express your information. Uh, so like done in, in this example uh, where thick edges become smaller and smaller uh, using um, also edge bundling techniques. Um, you can also use colors to express certain categories uh, between the edges but also directions. So there are many different possibilities also uh, beyond edge routing that you can do with the edges and um, this is um, all about edge styling. Um, I'm sorry. Um, and this edge styling, um, I hope that I can present this um, uh, this year already in, in some webinar uh, what you can also do with the edge styling. Uh, another possibility is also um, critical paths. Um, so here the idea is that you not only re uh, route a uh, single edge but an entire path maybe by for example aligning the nodes um, showing um, uh, one important path or em emphasizing one important path um, in, in your layout and then all other edges are um, routed a um, bit differently. So for example the hierarchic layout supports this. Yeah and with this I would like to wrap up um, and come to the um, questions session or the Q&A session. Um, so I will have a look at the questions, so this will probably take one minute and then I will try to answer these questions um, and I think I now have a look, uh, one moment. Okay, I will go through the questions and will try to answer them um, step by step. So the first um, question is whether, um, can, well, I just read it out loudly, can I resemble the directed routing style of the high layout with, the, uh, with an edge routing algorithm? So, um, the, so the idea is that um, you have um, an hierarchic layout, for example, where you, or you already have placed some nodes and you would like to have some, some uh, directed edges, okay. Um, and the question is, okay, um, I think the question is um, you have some, some hierarchic layout or typically in your hierarchic layout you have some monotonic path restrictions. So you know that um, all edges should go from top to uh, bottom. Um, and the, the question is whether you can also do this with edge routing. So, and this is 
actually you can do this. There are monotonic path restrictions for um, for the edge router, for example. And this you can use, for example, if you, your layout is already fixed. So your nodes um, maybe are already placed in layers and you would like to have some monotonic path restrictions. So the edges should go from top to bottom uh, and that you can also express in the edge router uh, or with the ex, uh, edge router. Um, the next question is, um, is it possible to introduce obstacles that are taken into account when routing the edges? So um, um, yes, this, this is uh, possible. So for example, uh, what do you, uh, so, when you apply edge routing, the main idea is that the edges go around your nodes. And then, um, uh, so basically your nodes are already obstacles. And if you want to use more obstacles, uh, what you can do is just introduce further nodes that uh, mimic these obstacles. Um, I think there is one very nice demo in, in our um, uh, in our um, library of demos. So maybe I can show this. Um, it's about a maze. Yeah. One moment. So I just go to the demos. Um, and I think it was about a maze. Yeah. Uh, here, this is also done with the edge routing. Um, and the idea is that um, these, these blue walls um, that these blue walls are just nodes. So basically the graph that you see um, consists of these blue walls here, each, each small wall segment is one node, and then you also have these nodes. And um, now what you can do is you can apply an edge routing um, between these uh, light and blue nodes, and you get routes that will uh, comply with these uh, walls. And I think it's also interactive. Um, you can change uh, the way or the position of the node and then it is rerouted. So yes, uh, this is also possible. Um, the next question is, um, I have a layout in which only I want to reroute few edges. Can I specify which of the edges um, are considered? Um, yes, um, this is um, in, especially for the edge router, is this possible? So you typically have on these layout data the, the possibility, especially for the edge router, uh, to uh, define the scope of affected edges so that you can say, okay, I really want to specify this and not only automatically de be determined which of the edges should be rerouted, then you can say this um, using the edge layout data. And the last question is, um, is it possible to change the routing style without rerouting the edges entirely, which is very similar um, to the previous question. But I think uh, what is asked is whether you can um, reuse the edge routing, so the path of the um, edge routes, um, and can change them. And uh, what I've already showed in, in the webinar is the curved layout stage, so which basically replaces the bands by, by rounding off the, the corners. And uh, such stages, um, there are further stages that you can use this. For example, there's one stage uh, where you can uh, translate or convert an orthogonal layout or an orthogonal edge routing into a polyline edge routing, uh, where also the edges are rounded off um, by, by octilinear um, segments. Yeah, that's also possible. And I think this uh, was the last question. Uh, and with this, I would like to wrap up the webinar. And I hope that we, uh, that you've learned a lot about edge routing and I would be happy to see you at the next webinar. Uh, until then, happy diagram.